It's impossible. I'm trying everything. I keep getting rejected. This is horrible. There is a housing crisis. I cannot find a place to live. The most cutthroat environment. I just want to find a place. It's like I cannot catch a break in this city. For the majority of this year, after all my struggles in London so far, from setting my life up, to getting trapped here, to getting sponsored, I have been stuck in the relentless, purgatory-like nightmare that is the London rental market in 2022, and boy, do I have some stories to tell you. It is hell out here. It doesn't matter how much money you have, whether you have a job, how cool you are, it's all irrelevant. There are just too many people searching for a flat in London right now, and too much greed from landlords and flatmates. Any remotely decent, not an absolute dump room, which there are plenty of in London, will have 200 messages in the first 30 minutes of posting, at least. People bid on rental properties now, or put down a whole year's worth of rent up front to secure a place, or both. People screw you over left, right, and center on both sides of the equation. It is a full-blown housing crisis. And this, day in, day out, has been my life. And I'm gonna share with you every juicy little detail of my experiences in this video. From how I got kicked out of my flat, to being technically homeless for months, to the excruciating search for a room, to calling out the garbage behavior I dealt with along the way, to noticing some hilariously bad listings. And guys, I am pulling zero punches. This is gonna be good. Pro tip, if you don't have to move to London or don't have to move apartments in the city right now, don't. That's a tip. You're welcome. For those of you that are new here, my name's LaShawn. I'm from Sydney, Australia, and I've been living abroad for the last five and a half years. First in Montreal, Canada, and the last three years in London. Plus some stints here and there, and a lot of travel in between. Chapters down below if you want to skip through and subscribe if you found this entertaining. I wanted to make this video for a long time. Now let's get into it. Starting off with how I got into this mess in the first place the situation. It was the beginning of the year 2022, with the lease of my apartment ending on the 31st of March. Due to one of my flatmates becoming the lead tenant and subsequently turning out to be a duplicitous, vile, alcoholic, control freak, lying sociopath, I wanted to move out. Understandably. I'm a very clean flatmate, but she was a clean lunatic. Sending you text messages five minutes after you finish cooking to clean up while you're still eating. Text and photos being all like WTF for a tiny watermark on the kitchen counter. She was like a balloon, taking up any free common area space with her own stuff as soon as you took your coat off the coat rack. Acting like she owned the place and everyone had to follow her rules and match her standards. Except when she'd get drunk by herself over a bottle of wine in the living room, which would happen quite often, by the way, and spill food and wine all over the place, which you could still see the next day in the afternoon, then that, that's okay. That's okay. All right. If you ever said anything to her that she didn't know, like telling her how to recycle correctly, she would arrogantly assert to you that you were wrong without any evidence repeatedly until you gave up. She was someone who desperately needed to live alone, but couldn't afford it. I already had a weird vibe from her when I first viewed the place, but I decided I could deal with it since the other flatmate, the previous lead tenant, was so lovely. This girl though has serious issues, but don't just take my word for it. This is a post from her on Hackney Wix Spaces, Facebook group for finding rooms, advertising my room a month, an entire month after I had moved out. Pause the video, take a read, count how many obvious red flags you see. Even in this absolutely ridiculous housing market, which I will go into in a bit, you could find someone for my room in under an hour. You can't find somebody after an entire month on the market. The problem isn't the flat, the location, or the price, which was 620 pounds a month. Look in the mirror, girl. The problem is you. Walking red flag of a person. Hope you enjoyed paying my rent. <laughs> Leading up to the end of my lease, I'd been searching for an apartment in and around the area I'd been living in for the last almost three years. My land, around Victoria Park. London fields as an ideal. I wasn't getting anywhere. The housing market post COVID with the government's push to get everyone to return to the office. A directive I'm wholeheartedly against, by the way. Everyone is suddenly moving back to London at the exact same time, inflating demand to an extreme against an already limited supply. A stark difference to COVID times when it was open season for renters because everyone left London. Back then, take your pick. Negotiate a cheaper rate even. I did. Can you even imagine that now? Pre-pandemic was more chill too. I found my first flat in five days. This time, I'd been sending hundreds of messages on spare room and Facebook groups over two whole months. 
and could count the number of replies I got on one hand. I needed more time. Early on, with over six weeks to the end of the lease, I had a chat with my sociopathic flatmate who was to take over the lease entirely after renewal, explaining my struggle and that I needed more time a month or two, especially since I had huge projects with Bright Trip coming up that took up all of my spare time. She was chill and understanding and agreed. Then when I told the landlord, asked for an extension and said she was cool with it, he responded, well, that wasn't what I heard. What? It turns out that right after our conversation, she went behind my back, sending a bunch of furious messages and voice notes, whining to the landlord and acting like a spoiled child, saying she didn't care and wanted to kick me out, along with kicking out the other flatmate. What the f Like I said, duplicitous lying bitch. If you're watching this right now, grow the f up. You're 33. And the landlord, the soulless robot that he was, completely ignored my plea for an extension to avoid probable homelessness, blindly followed the contract, and said the sociopath was the sole occupier of the flat as of April 1st, and that I either had to leave or he'd evict me. Not to mention he kept gaslighting me, saying I wasn't searching hard enough, even though he hasn't searched for rental in over two decades, and belittling my work for Bright Trip as a fun little creative project. It's my job. And before anyone tells me to just move back in with my parents like they did, I'm from Australia. I have no family here, in London, on this island, on this continent. To go home, if you can call it that, I haven't been back in five years, would involve quitting my job, uprooting my life in London, and move back to the other side of the world, where I have no job, and start from scratch again. And Airbnbs are so expensive in London right now that even that isn't an option. I'm not gonna burn through my savings just for the right to work here and make a loss every month because my job is forcing me to be in London. Quit my job? I'm on a sponsored visa. To quit is again the nuclear option on my life in London. I have no options. So the situation was that I, an adult earning a salary that can pay rent and can continue to pay rent and has always paid their rent on time and has fixed their room from being a dump with damp spots and paint falling off the walls into something nice and livable, which took me two whole weeks, is being forced into homelessness. This is actually ridiculous. Especially since I came back from Tenerife, when I did, specifically to give myself enough time to look for an apartment. Now look where that got me. March was spent entirely in London in a grueling apartment hunt that went nowhere. Literally only seeing three flats, talking to the landlord over the phone where it was human and understanding about my plight because it wasn't on record, and then being harassed by him with soulless cold messages an hour later over email, threatening to evict me, insinuating again that I wasn't searching hard enough when I was doing literally everything I could, including reaching out to homelessness tower hamlets, Homelessness Tower Hamlets. All while fighting the near crippling depression this whole situation has put me in. Only made worse by the equally depressing weather you can only find in this city. Ah, oh, London. I hate you. So, so much. This is the thing. I'm going through all this suffering for a city I don't even really like. What is the point? The city just feels like it's actively forcing me out. What do I go through this suffering for that I can work at my merely okay nine to five in a city where a sunny day is rare and cherished instead of being the baseline? I never knew what seasonal depression was until I got here. When I was in Tenerife, that completely evaporated. So for my relationship with London to work, I have to enjoy where I live and live somewhere I like. That place for me is London Fields. I live just a five minute walk from Victoria Park and always find myself gravitating towards there. Really anywhere around there. Near Victoria Park is ideal. London doesn't feel like home, but this is as close as it gets. With my rocky relationship with this city, I can't just pick some terrible overpriced room far out of central London just to live in London. If I do that, this relationship won't last more than a few months. March 31st came and despite my attempts to stay, I got kicked out. Homeless. getting evicted. Thankfully, one of my friends, Alex Strange, yes, that's his real name, kindly offered to host me in his spare box room in Walthamstow at the last minute while I searched for a place. He's an illustrator at Alex Strange Illustration by one of his prints. They are incredible and he really saved my ass. I would have liked to have finished this video shortly after I moved there, but alas, it's been over two months since then and I still haven't managed to find somewhere to live. After two generous months, I had to move out and had to hop between friends' couches in a highly 
perpetually unstable living situation. Let me describe to you in detail how brutal this apartment hunt has been and give you an idea of what the London rental market is like in 2022. The first two months leading up to the end of my lease, I sent well over 200 messages to potential flatmates and agents. I can count the number of responses I got on one hand. The viewings I did get in that time were all messed up in their own unique way. The first one I went to was in Clapton and was basically like an open house where everyone was packed into the evening 10-15 minutes apart doing the standard viewing and then hanging out with the flatmates to see if we get along but also with the other people you're competing against. Okay so I have to be nice to you and make you like me but then I need to look better than you at the same time but also be nice to you so I don't look like a complete sociopath as sociopathic this whole situation is already. Who on earth thought that would be a good idea? How is anyone going to be comfortable in such an obviously awkward situation? Pro tip for anyone looking to fill a room, don't treat us like cattle. Open houses are for buying or renting a whole flat, not a spare room. End of story, I got ghosted. Next, another one I saw was a five minute walk from my apartment. Super nice house and while I couldn't meet the flatmate organizing the viewing as she got stuck at work, I met the other one who was absolutely lovely and suggested I come back Saturday afternoon to meet the other flatmate. After doing the house tour, we started to get to know each other, starting with her, and then right as I started, the doorbell rang. It was the next viewer laughing and saying she ended up there 15 minutes early by accident. Girl, you knew exactly what you were doing. If you're at a viewing 15 minutes early, just wait outside. There's no need to ring the doorbell when you're 15 minutes early. You knew exactly what you were doing. So before I even had a chance to make my case, I got forced out with the promise that I could come back on Saturday. The flatmate I missed said she was busy Saturday and would let me know when she was free. So I hung out in a nearby park and canceled slash declined other plans I was gonna do. She never texted, never replied to my follow-ups, nothing. Wasted my entire day for nothing. Ghosted again. This is worse than dating in London. Seriously. People on the other side of this, if you meet someone and show them your apartment, at the very least, give them the courtesy of letting them know that you pick somebody else. Don't leave them hanging. Another place I saw was a renovated ex-council house in London Fields. Great kitchen, tiny room, got along crazy well with the flatmates. One was Australian from Sydney and I felt like I nailed the viewing. The rent was 550 pounds for the room and after the viewing, I sent a message to the Aussie saying I'd be down to move in and asked for some more info on the deposit. He said this, it's six weeks rent, so 3,300 pounds. Hold up, hold, hold up. Those are two different things. I asked him to clarify, that's the deposit for the entire house, right? So six weeks rent would be about 760 pounds. He said, no, he meant six times 550 equals 3,300 pounds. Six months deposit. This guy was asking for an interest-free loan of 3.3 grand for a tiny box room. He brushed it off saying it isn't like Australia where it's just four weeks, haha. Uh -huh. Mate, six months rent up front is fine, but a six month deposit is illegal. Max in the UK is six weeks. People here try to get away with anything. I've been canceled on 10 minutes before a viewing, long after I well and truly went out of my way to get there. I had a guy who I scheduled a viewing with for the weekend on the Monday before, and then he follows up with me Friday lunchtime the day before to double check it's still going ahead. I say yes, and then seven hours later, he cancels saying they gave it to a friend. Bruh, there is no way you didn't have any idea of that possibility just seven hours before. Hey, Gabriele, you're a dipshit. Moving on. I saw a place in London Fields, my favorite area in London. House was amazing, huge room, cool flatmates, viewing went super well. Then I got ghosted for quite a while, chased a few times, and then of course got the message that they gave it to someone else, but that I got quite a few votes, so I only just missed out. Like it's a f***ing election? Okay, yeah, I'll be sure to let the people of the next viewing know that I came second for the privilege of paying rent in your esteemed London Fields home. I'm sure that'll help my chances. I've looked at renting an apartment outright to avoid all this Londoner BS with flatmate interviews. I saw this one apartment in Omega Works in Fish Island, just east of Victoria Park, and it was the best place I've ever seen in all of London. Three bed, two broth, including one ensuite, huge kitchen, living area, super modern, and a huge balcony overlooking the canal for £2,398 per month plus bills. It was unreal, especially considering I saw a terrible rundown council flat just the day before, also a three bedroom for only £100 a month less. Some people are taking the piss, whereas this was an absolute gem that was worth the price. I wanted it so bad. I found two people to join me on the flat by Instagram stories. Seriously, it's my social media of choice. Follow me there if you haven't already. I was posting this all real time while I was experiencing it. I met up with one person who seemed cool, the other on a video call since he hadn't moved to London yet. Both had lived in Montreal though, which I absolutely loved the idea of. This group of three ex-Montrealers in this badass flat taking on London. Yeah, I really wanted this to work. We went ahead with putting an offer in, the first step being a frankly insane 
reference check. My God, they wanted everything. Credit check, passports, proof of address in the form of a utility bill, P60, original payslips for the last three months, letter from my current employer, signed, dated, and on letterhead, confirming my start date, length of employment, type of employment, position, and annual basic salary, proof of current accommodation, I'm homeless, with a similar letter from my landlord, proof of regular salary and rent payments via original bank statements, showing salary received and rent paid out. Bank statements must be detailed, showing all transactions with no missing pages. Do you have any idea how much of a breach of privacy that is? My landlord doesn't need to know everything I spend my money on or every facet of my life. Proof of home ownership for the guarantor, my visa to prove residency rights. Real talk, it's normal to ask for maybe a couple of these things, but not all of them. You could straight up steal up my whole identity with all of that information. Anyway, we still went through with the reference check because the place really was worth all that trouble. To give you perspective, this place was so good that if I got it, I would actually enjoy living in London. Let that sink in. That is not something I say lightly. The guy who hadn't moved to London yet was super on the ball with everything and super communicative. If you're watching this, let's hang out. Getting everything together in just a couple days. Perfect. The other guy, even though he was super responsive between the other viewings we did together, after I saw that amazing place on my own because he had work, he suddenly became very distant and non-responsive. Bro, this is not something you can afford to do in London's rental market, especially with somewhere this good. The dude took over five hours just to watch the video apartment tour I sent him. He did say he was down after I had to push and confirm with him though, but was weirdly standoffish for somewhere as amazing as this place. We go through gathering the references the next day and after chasing him, he suddenly bails on the apartment, saying there's a high chance he might move to Sweden in two months, which isn't something he bothered to mention before. Interestingly enough, I call him out on that because WTF, not cool, and said we'd have to find someone else to replace him. After searching all afternoon for someone else, he comes crawling back saying he jumped the gun on Sweden too early, that it was more likely to be in six months, and that he made a mistake begging for us to take him back. After talking to the other guy, we were both very uneasy about this, because for me, this whole flaking out debacle was a huge red flag. But at the end of the day, we hadn't found anyone else, and going with him at least gave us a chance. It didn't. That was a mistake. At that moment, he said he had all the docs ready, except the credit check, which was coming from Canada, which would take more time. I had to deal with Equifax before to get mine, and all he had to do was call them, and once they've verified your identity, it'll come through the next day. He was about to fly to Sweden and said he'd send all the docs he had with him while at the airport. Yeah, he didn't send those docs at the airport. After we gave him a second chance, he suddenly switched from sending what he had right away to waiting until he had the credit check as well, which even after three days, which then became over eight days, he made zero progress on. Nothing. I had to chase him and he still hadn't called them yet. Then I chased him again. Now I get an excuse that they're only open on weekdays. Mate, it's been eight days. There's a whole working week in there. And you didn't do shit. Dude was dragging his feet and completely screwing us out of getting this dream apartment. Other guy was getting frustrated too. Then after 10 days, after I chased him again, lazy f Ask the other guy when he's free to grab a beer to check the vibes. Are you for real, mate? You could have asked this at the beginning, not now as an excuse to drag this out for even longer and avoid sending the references. No one is buying your BS anymore. I put my foot down, called him out on everything, suggested he be a bit more respectful of other people's time and energy next time around, instead of completely blowing any of our chances of securing the apartment for his own selfish interest. Then I kicked him from the group chat. I'm a pretty reasonable guy, but one thing you do not cross me on is anything to do with my living situation. In that case, I will burn every bridge that needs to be burned. Some people in this city are almost too much to be believed. Let's take Lucy, for example. Lucy and a few of her friends found a whole place in my land, but needed to fill a quite spacious spare room as they put in an offer. I sent her a message and this is the message I got back. Hiya, I'm sending the same message to everyone as I've of had like 200 people in 24 hours, so a bit overwhelming. We do not live there currently, we are interested in the property and in talks about taking the lease over from the current tenants from July. Then there's some more details about when they're gonna move in, what the landlord is requiring, and then the juicy bit, the flatmate bios. The flatmates are me, 31F from Cambridge, photographer, writer, works in Hackney Wick in a beer bar. Tidy, neat, goes out to gigs a lot, funny slash dry in brackets, I think. 30F from Cambridge, documentary producer for ITVC4. Chill, normal, funny, likes a quiet night in, but partial to a pill and a bonfire. What? 36M, exec producer from Coventry, works in a bunch of art exhibits there. Latest is about rave culture slash was featured on six music and shit. Okay. Relax, likes wine, often out and about. To try and whittle it down, I'll just add a couple of things I think are important for potentially living together. 
No man annoying cat party type shit. No woke shit, in brackets, we all hate that. No pronouns. No tone policing. Must be normal and fun and have a sense of humor. All caps. No live, laugh, love. Do you get that? No live, laugh, love. No live, laugh, love. No boring people. Full stop. If you're still interested, <laughs> if you're still interested, let me know. If not, I'll put you in the no pile for later. Lol. Full stop. What? What was that? Partial to a pill in a bonfire. No f***ing pronouns. No tone policing. The f what is this? The whole like must be normal, can't be boring stuff. I'm sorry, but seriously, who the f*** do these people think they are? And who in their right mind would read all of that, see all of those red flags and think, yeah, that all sounds good to me. Needless to say, I didn't reply back. Some places are so absurdly abysmal, it's insane that anyone could consider them livable. Look at this gem of a listing titled Mini Studio for Rent in Willesden Green. Cozy room with own sink, 500 pounds per month. This, my friends, is a work of art. Look at it. The bed is into the well of the kitchen. It's so efficient. You can cook from bed. You can eat in bed. You can clean the dishes, all from the comfort of your bed. All thanks to there being no room to move. Oh yeah, and watch out, it's not actually a bed, it's a futon. What genius. This, quite rightly, got absolutely roasted in the comments. I'm calling human rights. Even in prison, you'd have more space. Just make sure you don't stretch too much as you'll get your feet in the oven. <laughs> I looked it up and the bed placement is an illegal fire hazard, but these places do exist. There's London for you. Some places are just inflated rip-offs, run down shitty council flats, commanding ridiculous amounts because of current astronomical demand, not because the place is any good. I saw a place in Globetown, which I could have taken a relatively big room in a run down council house, replacing the landlord, an Australian guy who was moving out with his girlfriend. 850 pounds plus bills, bringing it to around 920 pounds a month, which is in my budget, but it's at the top of my budget. If I'm paying that much, I wanna be in a nice place, not somewhere significantly worse than my old flat for almost twice the price. The London rental scene is cutthroat. It is brutal. It is unrelenting. It is the worst apartment hunting experience I have ever been through. And I thought Montreal was bad. I have a video about that one too. In London, you can trust no one. You have to play everybody while everybody plays you. It's worse than dating in this city. At least on a date, you can have two or even five hours to play with, enough to break the ice with a stranger and get comfortable. On a viewing, you have 15 minutes. Nail it. If you do nail it, the next step is to live together. That's like marrying someone after the first 15 minutes of a first date. Who does that? It's not just getting along with the flatmates either. If you just talk about yourself and ask about their life and get along, have conversation that flows and then leave, they'll be like, oh yeah, he was amazing, but I have no idea what he's like to live with. So you have to force that conversation too. It's so weird. And that's the other thing about this whole bizarre interaction. The stakes are so much higher than a first date because the outcome is that you're living together. And if you do get rejected, it's so much worse than a date where you can just be like, okay, that's fine. I can find someone else or I can take a break. No, with apartment hunting, every rejection is a reminder that this nightmare is not over. You have no choice but to keep searching. You still have no way to live in this city that you're forced to be in because of your job that sponsors you to be here. A basic human need is not met. After enough rejection, like dating, you just become emotionally numb to it all. So that's where I'm at right now. Oh, I'm sorry. You expected a happy ending after all this BS and suffering? <laughs> No. no, 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 no. I'm still well and truly in this hell. It's been four and a half months. So today is Monday the 13th of June. I had a viewing on Friday, I think, in my land, literally so close to where I used to live. And it went really well. The guy works for SoFar Sounds. We really vibed. I had a really good feeling about the place. And yesterday, he followed up with me an unprompted follow-up message, which is a very good sign, saying they'll get back to me sometime today. So I'm just waiting for their response, but I have a pretty good feeling. Hopefully this is the end of my four months of hell, please. So I just got a response from that apartment. I got it. I got the place. I got the place? Is this actually happening? Is this four month search? Is this actually over? Oh my god, I just honestly didn't believe it. I was freaking out. Holy shit, I have somewhere to live. Someone said yes to me. 
I am apparently cool enough to live in London. Said yes, obviously, because I mean... <laughs> so yeah, assuming nothing comes to derail this whole situation, this is over. This is actually over. With... Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, I'm so happy. I'm so relieved. And that, finally, after five and a half months of searching, I finally found a place to live in London. Not in some random faraway corner where it takes two hours to get in the city, not an absolute dump of a box room for rip-off price, but literally a few minutes away from where I used to live. In my land. Again, my land. I haven't left my land for over five years, but I've only been in London for three. <laughs> Funny how life works sometimes. I'm in a three bedroom flat paying 750 pounds a month plus bills for a 9.8 square meter double room, facing away from the street zone, so nice and quiet. My flatmates are awesome. I have a spacious living room and a balcony. Maybe I'll do a house tour sometime soon. It is ex council to be fair, and it needed a lot of work to get it to where it is now, including prepping and painting the entire flat and a lot of wrestling with the real estate agents to get things fixed, including publicly calling them out on my Instagram stories. It was the only thing that works and getting them to pay us back the 400 pounds we spent on painting this place. But I'm pretty happy with where we've gotten to. It's nice. Our parties are epic. And this is my home for the foreseeable future. I did it. I honestly didn't think it would happen at some points, but there was a catch. I got the yes towards the start of June, but the move-in date was the 17th of July. I didn't want to couch surf for another five weeks, so logically the only solution I had was to travel. I had no choice. I just did what I had to do. I flew to Iceland on an epic road trip up into the West Fjords, and then a few weeks in Romania, first at a music festival, and then the rest of my time on a road trip across the entire country. I burned through basically all of my annual leave to do it, but worth it. So worth it. I also have to give a massive thank you to all of my friends who either offered to host me or host my things throughout this whole experience. Alex, Leon, Joe, Curtis, Natalie for hosting me, Arturo for letting me keep the majority of my stuff in your storage locker, Mackenzie for holding onto my bike. I am so grateful. At one point, my belongings were literally in five different corners of London. It was ridiculous. And me, in the middle of all that, with a backpack and a skateboard, living a pseudo nomadic life. It was, it was kind of freeing in a way. And I definitely want to talk more about that experience in another video, but it was quite a cathartic experience to throw and give away so many of my belongings that I had gathered up over the years and cut down to what I really needed. And I still have a long way to go on that. Also, all of this happened through basically me sharing this experience in real time over my Instagram stories. Every single friend that reached out to help reached out via my Instagram stories because they were aware of what was happening to me and then were able to reach out and help out. So yeah, a lot of this was only possible through the power of social media. I was in really tough times and I used social media to help me get out of it. So if you're interested, follow me on Instagram. I post stories basically every day, very unfiltered in what I, what I post on there. Maybe you'll help me in the next crisis that I go into because clearly from the trajectory of this YouTube channel, it's just crisis after crisis after crisis. What do you think the next crisis is gonna be? Let me know in the comments. So that's it. If you yourself have been through the apartment hunting gauntlet in London this year, I'd love to hear your experiences in the comments below. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Sean out. We all want to help one another. Human beings are like that. We want to live by each other's happiness, not by each other's misery. We don't want to hate and despise one another.